Welcome back to the channel, my friends. It is a wintry day. It is dreary. There's probably water on my lens on the Hero 12 already. It started spitting at me. Yeah, we got a little bit of rain today that they weren't calling for, but it's new tire day because I believe that the tires on this bike have crapped the bed, so to speak. So a quick recap and a little explanation as to where I've been in my own head for a month. And let me know in the comments below if you can relate to this. And I'm gonna ride nice and gentle. These tires are cold. It's 44 degrees out. The road is cold. It's in the 30s overnight. And I don't trust the bike. Yeah. So about a month ago, because today is December 30th, I had the suspension technology shocks installed on my 2019 Street Glide Special here. Okay, got them installed. They felt great, except in my first video riding home on them, I noticed that the front end of the bike feels a little wiggle wobbly like with this suspension on it. So we, oh my good, whoa, whoa. I don't, that was weird. Well, it wasn't all in my head and it wasn't something I was going to get used to. If you've been watching the videos, I've been back and forth with H2 Performance and I've passed on some information to techs and dealers I know. And I'm gonna try not to name names, but there's a lot of people who have been involved in helping me. And to them, I say thank you. Nobody was helping me downshift, but the last few rides, it's been below 55 degrees and I have not been comfortable on the bike. Can't hardly lean it. Get, I feel like I'm sliding everywhere. So in talking to H2 Performance, they said, bump up the rear preload. So I did, it felt better, but it was 60 degrees out that day. Then I talked to Doc Harley and H2 Performance and they said, try American Elite tires. Okay, spoiler alert, that's what I'm getting installed. But H2 also said, hey, try running a higher pressure in the front or dock one of them one of them said run a higher pressure so today we are running a higher pressure i have about 40 psi in the back 40 41 and in the front i've got 39 or 40. they're not exact but those are that's what i can see on my little dial right and i have the harley compressor gauge combo but i double checked and it, it matches my fancy uh gauge thing so i think they're on point i'm not sure I took pictures of the tires. I sent them to a number of people, all of which said there's plenty of tread life left, but I can start to see a little bit of cupping. And it looks like they were run at low PSI and that they were like run hard or something. You know, 40 degrees out, I haven't had my coffee yet. It's a little hard to talk and concentrate. But here we are. So far, it actually feels a little bit better. I feel a little bit of squiggle, but not as much. And I'm on very familiar roads to me on purpose because I want to I want to feel how it feels different. You know, I, I could do a comparison in my head, but H2 Performance and Doc and all the other guys, they uh, well, not all, but some, they recommend the Dunlop American Elite tires and they're a dual compound tire and yada, 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 supposed to have better grip. We're going to find out on the channel, hopefully later today. Yeah, see, that felt good actually that was that was better so what in the world would cause the suspension to make any imperfection in the tire more noticeable well i've done a lot of research and i i hope you're still watching i have been wrapped up in my own head for about four weeks on this crap and it it prevents me from sleeping and eating and no no it, it doesn't um whoa i get a green light look at me Nice and easy, don't want to slide. Yeah, I'm just pussyfooting it around. I just, I have zero confidence in this bike right now. Let me go back a second. I don't believe that the suspension was installed incorrectly because when it was warmer out, it did handle better. It's just when it's getting chillier out and these tires are sort of cupped, they're also squared off. So from what I've gathered, the suspension technology shocks are stiffer than stock. What I also found out is that the Harley shocks are so soft, that's why they bought them out, even if you crank up the preload to where it throws you off the bike, that 
when they push on the tires, they do it weirdly and it causes accelerated cupping in the Dunlop tires. Uh, I believe it. I've seen enough anecdotal evidence that I could believe that. I am religious about setting my tire pressure. I absolutely am. At least once a week, if not every ride, I am setting my tire pressure. I, I don't uh, I don't go a week without setting them. And I can feel, I'm tuned into my bike. I can feel a two or three PSI difference. I really can. That's not bravado or machismo or machismo, whatever the word. What that is is I'm hypersensitive to this stuff because I dumped my Vaquero in 2018. I probably mentioned it in a couple other videos recently, but that's sort of the why. But I depend on this bike for, whoa, that didn't feel good. I depend on this bike for my sanity, okay? I ride frequently. I don't ride far, but I do ride frequently and I need it. I need to get out and feel the wind in my face and my knees in the breeze. And I need to be able to trust the bike and right now, I, golly, I, I can't trust the bike. I'm not even doing the speed limit here. I really, really, really don't want to wreck this thing. So I'm not willing to push the boundaries. So I'm hoping, beyond hope, that new tires will fix it. The dealership that I'm going to is a new one to me. I've never had any work done there before, but I have been there on the channel several times. And they happen to be running a $45 per tire install special. So with that and prices close to Revzilla, I'm giving them a shot. You know, it's uh, it's about $300 in my area cheaper to install them here at this dealer than the other dealers. So if you are those other dealers and you're watching, I'm sorry, but they had the best price and they have the tires in stock and I'm impatient. I would have loved to have waited until spring to have this done. I really would. I would like to just not spend the money until springtime and see how they are when it's warm out. But it's bothering me so much in my head that I'm not willing to let the bike sit for three months until I can ride again and the temperatures are warmer. It's not gonna happen. So I think that brings us up to speed. I don't think it's a suspension. I think it's the tires. They do have some imperfections in them. Half the tread life is gone. We're just gonna see how it goes. And that's, that's all we can do, right? We can only do the best that we can do at, at the time. My goodness. I don't like this front tire being at 40 PSI. It is not comfortable. It, I don't know. The bike just wants to wee. But the dealership did say they're going to check the whole thing over. I think they're going to do a fall away test to check the steering neck bearing because that can affect this. They're going to check the fork alignment because that can affect this. They're going to check the wheel bearings because that can also affect this. So there's a lot of variables. So when somebody comes out with a video and says, do this one thing, it'll fix your Harley wobble and this and that. If you go back to two or three years now, one of my first videos, first 50 videos, was me getting a bunch of stuff done to this bike to fix the Harley wobble and tires, brakes, and wheel bearings, and the steering neck bearing, those were it. Those were the things. That's what fixed the bike the last time. So it stands to reason that, you know, what, 20,000 miles later, Maybe that stuff will fix it. And I'm willing to try a new set of tires because I don't I don't like that the Dunlop OEM tires cup so easily and don't last very long. From what I've gathered, anecdotal evidence again, these should last, these American Elites I'm having installed, should last about twice as long. So again, I'm putting a lot of hope in one basket and I'm not even doing the speed limit. I am just such a wuss on this bike right now and it's probably fine. Somebody else would ride it and be like, dude, that bike's awesome. Feels great. But for me, it's not. And I'm willing to spend good money to make it feel right because it ain't right. And if I'm not riding, I'm going insane. Look at, look at us, we're getting lucky again with the green light. So let's get up to the dealer and see what's what.
All right, so here's the skinny on what's been going on. I dropped the bike off. It's now a couple hours later, two and a half hours. New tires are on. The tech took the bike for a ride, said he didn't really notice anything going on. He did find that the one fork was a little bit higher than the other, so he adjusted them, whatever. Um, he said that he didn't really get on it on it, so he's like, yeah, you can tell it wasn't perfect or whatever. So they put the American Elites on. Said the bearings were good, everything else was good. They did a fall away test and that, that passed. So everything's good on the bike. And now he put the new tires on, so take a look at those. Is that not a sexy looking tire? Oh, the sipes and the fresh rubber. I think we're gonna grip. I think we're gonna be okay. And I'm very hopeful. The tech also said that while he didn't get on it, on it with the new tires, cause they have to be broken in, right? You gotta ride a hundred miles or so easy. He said the thing's handling like it's on rails. So I've explained the issue I was having. I got the tech to ride it and, uh, and adjust a few things and put the new tires on. And they did it for a really reasonable rate. So this is like the cheapest service I think I've ever had. Now it's time to ride home and see how it feels. Nothing in my hands. You can tell I've been riding a while. Half an hour. <laughs> been riding for like a half an hour. And I had a couple of squiggly feelings early on, first two miles maybe, but I think it might've been a tar snake or a wind buffeting or something, because now I don't feel any of that. I've made some right turns, some left turns, some stoplight type turns, you know? And I don't feel any of that squiggle just the bike gripping the road. I feel the wind right now. I gotta, gotta move my head over, move my body over. Battle the wind. But I can feel the tenseness leaving my body. And I'm gonna take this corner nice and easy. This gave me problems the other day. Man, the bike just wants to go through the corners. It just wants to go through the corners now. Oh, look at this, watch this. I can go through this corner again at regular speed. Oh yeah, the bike wants the corner now. This is really, this is really quite something. It's like you breathe on it and it's like, yep, we're gonna go around this corner and it doesn't feel like it's sliding at all. Again, I can feel the tenseness leaving my body and I know there's gonna be a wet spot up here. <laughs> it's not my wet spot, I didn't cause it. Oh, it's bright, 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 bright. Hey, there we go. I gotta clean my visor again, get a little dirty. But I am not as trepidatious uh, as I was uh, a couple hours ago. This is much better. Here's a bend. We're just going to toss it into this bend. Toss it. There's a bump, a couple of bumps mid corner. Nothing. Just no slipping, no sliding. That was enough to like leave clench marks on my seat before. I've been a very clenched buttocks rider for the last few weeks. Now, not so much. Take it easy the first couple of miles. Realize that the tires are cold. Don't try to don't try to do any sudden movements. But then after a couple of miles, just lean into the corner. And it's not even so much leaning further over that was the problem. It's more leaning just a little bit. That's enough to cause an issue, or was. Not anymore. What are we doing here? I'm getting in this other lane. I want over. Yeah. I'm gonna get pole position, baby. And now I have to go fill up. So I will be sure and do more rides on this, but so far I'm a believer. Let's see, what do we got? 220 on the tank, 10 miles to empty. 
I've been running on uh, low fuel light for 20 miles almost. 19.4 for the pedantic ones who have to have specific data to work with, or datum, data, pronounce it how you will. But this is quite something, my friends. Yes, new rubber always makes John feel good. Not like that. Get your mind out of the gutter. Can I get a green light? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Where's my green light? There it is. Oh, yeah. Nice and smooth. These are like problems people in Florida don't have to worry about. Nope, they don't. They just go out for a ride. They catch themselves in a thunderstorm every afternoon. At 3 o'clock on the dot, it rains all across the state of Florida. Fight me in the comments below. No, don't fight me. I don't like fighting, but you can tell me the truth if you want. Whatever. Truth ain't gonna hurt me. Do I need this? Yeah, we're good. All right. So, I think that's about gonna do it for this really long video. I'm sure it was a long one, but it, it's stuff that needs to be said, right? So, you know, you get in your own head, you gotta fix it somehow. And for me, that's throwing money at the problem. Go figure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, boop the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. The two mantras, they come in handy. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. Maybe it's new tires for your Hardly Davidson. I said hardly, I did. Bye.